Some of you may remember this car. This is my 2002 BMW M3. I bought this car at the auction after it had been through a series of auctions in various states of disrepair. I believe the miles were rolled back. I completely fixed all of the body issues. Well, okay, I fixed most of the body issues. There's still some more to go. And now it's time to catch the car up on maintenance. When you talk about E46 M3s, there are three big things, they're called the big three, that need to be done to these cars at some point or another. The first one is chassis reinforcement, and this car has been reinforced, which was huge for me because it's a lot of labor. The next two things are Vanos upgrade or rebuild and rod bearings. I have no history on this car whatsoever, so I might be doing a job that doesn't need to be done. However, my own peace of mind is worth it. I want to know the rod bearings are good, so I'm going to replace them. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to get this thing in the air. We're going to tear the bottom of the engine apart. And hopefully the rod bearings look good. This thing runs and drives. I've run a couple tanks of gas through it. It runs and drives good. So I don't really suspect I'll find any issues, but I need to know that they're good. Since we're removing the oil pan to replace the rod bearings and you need to remove the subframe, which has the motor mounts on it, I need to support the engine from the fender rails. And I've got this not so perfect piece that I've used over the years to do the job. It sits in the fender rails like this. And then it lifts by the engine hook. It's not exactly the best position, but unfortunately my 1960 something whatever however old that old engine support was doesn't really fit on this car right i didn't trust it and it's not worth causing more damage or causing more damage it's just not worth it so i went up to my local drugstore and i bought a new one they're not that expensive anyway and now i know i'm gonna be okay when i drop the subframe out of this car Nope, don't like that. That's better. Janky old lip. Next, I'm gonna pull this skid plate. Ooh, it's leaking. Next, we'll get the rear control arm lollipop bushings out. So this thing's been leaking for a little bit, and the uh, motor mounts are collapsed. You can see that they're collapsed, and they're allowing the oil pan to make contact with the sway bar. So I did buy some new motor mounts specifically for fixing that. And next, we need to drain the oil. It's really, this doesn't look like a bad job at all. Time to drain the oil. Might lose my light here. Hopefully not. Wow, looks like oil. Next, we'll drop the sway bar. Now we're gonna start working on the power steering. Oh, I didn't need that. And then it looks like we need to pull the power steering pump down and let it hang by the lines. I don't really want to breach the power steering system. I don't see a need. Okay, we are almost off with the power steering pump. All right, now we're gonna get the tensioner adjusted so that I can pull the belt off. Okay, now well, that's kind of hanging out of the way. Oh, there's a whole bunch of, someone added some zip ties in this. That's not okay. I did notice this boot, it's kind of screwed up here. I don't know if I'll be able to save that or not. Hopefully I don't have to replace the control arm. All right, let's get this. All right, next I'm gonna unbolt the steering rack from the subframe. This might not be a necessary step, 
but I'm gonna do it anyway. Well, that bolt is a little tricky. Okay. Now, I think we're ready to drop the subframe. There's only four bolts that hold the subframe in. There we go, look at all that room. God, I could, I could sleep in, no, I'm not gonna, I can't sleep in there. So now it just looks like we got some uh, oil pan bolts and a level sensor connector, an oil line, ain't too shabby. Let's get the oil line out of the way. Now we'll unplug the oil level sensor. Okay, come on now. Now we've got some bell housing bolts. At this point, I think all that's left are the 10 millimeters that hold the pan to the engine. So we're gonna just start zipping those out. Okay, are we making a mess? Not really. Time to get this pan out. Okay, well that's making a mess. Can I catch it? Yep. And the pan is out. Let's get this oil pan gasket out. Well, the inside of the pan looks pretty decent. No sparkles, so that's always a plus. That's a casting thing. This is good. I'm glad to see this. Okay, next we're gonna remove the oil pump nut. It's a reverse thread. that nut back on there so we don't lose it and then we need to remove the oil pump next we'll remove the three six millimeter hex bolts that hold the oil pump to the block okay those are really tight so we're going to use a little extra care yeah those are tight Okay. We are actually going to start at this cylinder here. We're going to do these two cylinders first. And then when I'll rotate the engine over, I'll get to the others. I'm probably just going to show the process on a couple cylinders and then I'll show you all of the original rod bearings after they're out.
Okay. The bearings actually don't look too bad. They're not all the way through to the copper, just a little. I don't suspect there's going to be any crank damage whatsoever. There's no deep grooves. This looks good. So for bearings, I've got factory bearings and ARP bolts. Got some new motor mounts, a couple other new parts, some assembly lube. This should go back together pretty easily. The crank journal looks pretty much perfect. I can't feel any scratches or grooves. This is all in really good shape. And normally, I would plastic gauge it or use a micrometer to figure out if there's any wear. However, this is a maintenance repair and not so much a failure repair. There's no signs of metal in the oil. I have no reason to suspect that this crank is in any other condition than ready to put bearings on. I know that's not ideal for you engine builders out there, but this car ran fine with these semi-worn bearings. It's time to put some new ones in and keep driving. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the bolts. These will not be reused. And now we have to get this bearing out of here. Okay, so the lower is a 439 and the upper is a 440 and I'm talking about the end of the part number. Okay, the bearing's in. We're gonna get some assembly lube. This is absolutely crucial. All right, get some assembly lube. All right, this is ready to go back together. Okay, let's get the bearing up and into the rod. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. It's not terrible. Swing this to the side and bring this. You know what? We're going to put a little bit of lube on that crankshaft just to be safe. I'm going to be changing the oil after a short time anyway. I want it to be right. Now I've got the ARP bolts lubricated with the lube that comes with them. I'm just going to kind of loosely get that started. The first torque spec is going to be snug. I'm just going to use my ratchet for this. Now we'll get the torque wrench. Now ARP's torque spec is 70 foot-pounds. We are not going to go straight to 70. You never want to do that. We're going to do this in stages. So the first is going to be 10 foot-pounds and then we'll increase it to 20 and then we'll increase it by 20 to 40 and then we'll increase it by 30 to 70. So let's get started here. Okay, there's 10 foot-pounds. And this will be 20 foot pounds. And now I'll try to get 40 foot pounds. And now we'll go straight to 70. Okay, cylinder three is done. I'm going to repeat that process for the remaining five cylinders. This was actually really simple. These are really straightforward jobs. You just gotta take your time and not forget any steps. You can clearly see someone else has been in here before with a paint pen. This was likely done when this car had 30,000 miles. I found a record in its history 
that had it had rod bearings done at 30k and that's likely from that but this all went together super smooth let's go check out those bearings the bearings definitely have some wear and this is probably the worst one here but they're not terrible I don't think this thing was coming apart anytime soon but I'm definitely glad I decided to put bearings in it before I start going back together we need to get these motor mounts off Well, let's take a look at the motor mounts. This is the passenger side. Look how collapsed that is. Now, these are the same mounts left and right. Here's my new ones. I bought some new mounts from 034 Motorsports. And even this one is collapsed. But this one is completely... I mean, look at that. That's why the sway bar was making contact with the oil pan. So we're going to get these new ones installed. And then... Uh, Start getting this thing buttoned back together. Get this oil pump reinstalled. All right, we're just gonna kind of run these down. I'm not gonna torque them until we get this all in place here. Okay, now we just got to torque down the oil pump. We'll give that pickup screen a little spray, make sure there's no debris on it. Yep. All right, now we're going to reinstall the gear on the oil pump. Okay, we're going to put just a dab of Loctite on this just because it's pretty important. If I can find my Loctite. Loctite. Oh, please don't tell me I'm out. It could be out. That was a little much. That was a lot much. I could have gone without that. All right. So this is reverse thread. In order to get the pan all the way back up, you have to remove this little sup screen, six tens. Probably should pull that down before you drop the pan. I didn't do that. There we go. Now we're up. Now it's time to torque down the oil pan. And these are torqued to 89 inch pounds. And back to the start. At this point, we're ready to push the subframe back in. We've got the, all the pan stuff done, the dipstick, the oil level sensor, that oil line is done, bell housing bolts are tight and torqued down. Same with all the oil pan bolts, everything's torqued to spec. And now it's time to see if we can fight the subframe up. No idea how hard this is going to be, but it'll be fine. Got Mr. Pole Jack here, just in case. Ooh, that's going to be this is going to be tough. It's as high as the pole jack goes, so I have to lower the car just a hair. <laughs> Alright, I 
I can't see what I'm doing now. All right, that's lined up. Wow, that went right in this, this spot. So we're gonna go down the rest of the way. I might actually fish this uh, rack in place first. I think I'm gonna do that. All right, now we'll get that tightened up. All right, so that's in, that motor mount's in, that motor mount's in. I can get this side bolted in, but this side's still a ways off. Really like to get that setting flush. So we're gonna lower this down and then I'll use the pole jack to push that the rest of the way up. Or we'll just use the car, it's fine. Yeah, it's perfect. Now I'm gonna try to get the power steering pump bolts lined up here. This might be a little tricky, or it'll be really easy. I only got one in the arena. One thing I like to do on cars like this is clean up the fasteners. So what I normally do is I just spray a little brake clean in some sort of tray and then I let stuff sit in there while I'm working on it and then by the time I'm ready to use it, it just wipes all the dirt away. Sometimes you just use an air nozzle and blow all the dirt off of it. But nothing beats clean stuff. Nothing. What the heck? How did I turn the lock on? Okay, now we're gonna get a ratchet and make sure that's tight. Okay, now we're tight. Time to zip the sway bar up. And I don't know if you can tell, but now I can fit most of my fingers between the pan and the bar, whereas before that oil pan was resting on the bar, it actually wore a spot in the bar might try to find a replacement. Unfortunately, I had to install some aftermarket cable ties. There's a rubber bushing that holds this power steering line to this bracket, and it's broken. This is super common on old rubber bushings, essentially, that have to hold any kind of weight. They get soaked in oil or soaked in fluid. Heat cycles, age, everything ruins them. So I will look to see if I can replace that rubber piece so that this can be properly mounted. I also noticed that instead of band clamps, someone used zip ties on the steering rack bellows. I'll be replacing those with the proper metal bands. Next, let's get these control arm lollipop bushings back into place. All right, I've got all the shields in. I just gotta zip the bolts down and then we can lower this thing back to the ground. Still need to put the belt on it and a few other things, but we're getting real close. All right, we're done under here. Let's lower this thing down. Well, now we can get this. Before I put the oil filter housing cap back on, I'm going to pour a quart of oil in the housing here, and that will hopefully allow this thing to build oil pressure as fast as possible. We're also going to pull some fuses before we crank it so that we can crank it, build some oil pressure before we fire it. Brand new bearings, you don't want to take any chances. So I've got the crankcase full. I've got a couple fuses pulled out of it so it won't fire. So I'm gonna crank it for a while, build some oil pressure, put the fuses back in it and start it up and everything should be good. These don't fire. Please tell me I got the right fuses.
Okay. Now we're going to replace the fuses. See if she comes to life. Success. I'm just gonna let it run for a little while and I think we're good. This is where the train derailed. I was really happy that the rod bearing service went super smooth. There's no new oil leaks. The engine started right up. It made good oil pressure, uh, no ticking or knocking, all the things that you'd be happy about after a major engine service. However, there was still an engine noise that existed from before I did this service. Not that I thought it would fix it, but I decided to look into it. So the sound was kind of a rotational, groany sound. I hate that sound. The car's done this since I bought it, so it's not like it's a new sound. And I spent some considerable time listening to all sorts of different engine problem sounds from a BMW M3 S54 engine ticking and knocking and rattling and all kinds of stuff. And I only found one video where it sounded the same. Only one. And the guy had to rebuild his Vanos to fix it and realize that the exhaust hub was broken. So I, I went, ah, I have one week, one week to get the Vanos done and fixed and get this car to the St. Louis European Auto Show. So I didn't record the job. I'm sorry. I did record some pretty key parts of it, but uh, I tore the entire thing apart. I bought the tools to lock the cams and pin the crank. I bought uh, the base on upgraded pump disc and the cryo treated, or I think it's cryo treated exhaust gear and a complete Vanus rebuild kit, essentially everything to do that job. And I got it done two days before the European Auto Show. I put 70 miles on it before the European Auto Show, but let me show you what I found. So here is the exhaust hub out of this engine. And as you can see, it does have some wear on these two tabs, but they're not broken or sheared off. When I got this apart and I realized that this wasn't broken, it was terrible. I, I, was, I usually like to find a smoking gun and this wasn't it. It was kind of a relief at the same time that it wasn't really in that bad of shape or so I thought because then I got to the intake Just gear. Just doing a little preventative maintenance and look at that. Well come back here don't go in there. That bolt's bad. That bolt's bad. That bolt's also bad. That bolt's bad. That's loose. That's loose. It's fine, guys. The cam gears are attached to the camshafts by six of these Allen headed 6x1.0 millimeter bolts. They are always included when you buy a complete Vanos rebuild kit. And I was like, why would you ever need new bolts? Well, I found that out as soon as I got to the intake side because while those are in good shape, here's the intake. Yeah, that's, that's really bad. So four of them were broken off completely. And one of the four that was broken off, I actually had to drill with a reverse drill bit to get out, which was a whole lot of fun and nerve wracking. And then the two remaining bolts were loose and these are cut halfway through. So what happens is these back out and then that little bit of play between the gear on the cam and the bolt beats the crap out of the bolt and eventually cuts it in half. And these two are cut about a third of the way through, maybe a little further. I almost lost this engine. If that had gone all the way through and all these two remaining bolts had broken, I would have had to put an engine in this car. It would have been a catastrophic failure. And of course, I had to replace the upper timing chain guide because, well, they, uh, 
they break. And guess what? This one was broken. Well, I'm sorry. I almost had an S54 to tear down on the channel. And as much fun as it would be to tear apart an E46 M3 engine, not, not that. Anything but that. This could have let go at any given time. It could have been the first turn of the key after replacing the rod bearings. And I, would, I don't even want to think about where my mind would be if that happened. It, I don't have to because I've put 350 miles on this car since all of that service work. And I've got no new issues to report except for some transmission wine. Nothing notable, no ticking, no rattling, no oil leaks, nothing at all except for some diff clunking. It's been fantastic. I've got 150 miles to go and then I can change the oil and drive it how I want to and ignore all the other problems. What's left? Well, not a whole lot. Nothing that I can think of, really. This was a lot of work. Uh, I got it done in time for the European Auto Show, which was great. It wasn't really a goal that needed to be set, but sometimes I just pick some date so that I can push myself and focus on one car and get it done. And that is what I've done. And I feel fantastic that it's this far. It's, this is great. I mean, it's only been a year, geez, 14 months since I bought this car. It's been through a little bit of a transformation. If you haven't seen the other videos, they might be worth watching. Maybe not. Got some interior work to do, a little bit of body work. Probably have an update video whenever any of that stuff gets done, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's not my normal style of videos, but I do like to keep people updated on my project cars. So as always, I love all the comments, all the feedback, and even the criticism. I love it all. And I'll catch you on the next one.